Eric A. Manus and the Dream of the Cities in the Sky, brought to you by Electric Soup for the Soul. dot com. Be sure to visit us at Electric Soup for the Soul. dot com. The city divided. Tumbling about, Manus read some more until he wound up like before in the dark space betwixt the sky cities. He used the time to think the words or. The last thing Eric had read said, "If you are whole, then you are filled with light. But if you are someone who is marred, you are divided, filled with darkness." Thinking through his life's division, Manus reached at last this conclusion: "Tis my darling wife I've lost in this life. It's threads of us that have come undone." Manus found he talked to his wife more now than he had in the time she had physically been there at home with him, when they had been side by side and somehow ignored each other. Had somehow been no more than strangers, obstacles to get past, been separate though together. Now he so missed her, for she increasingly was always with him, as he imagined the day when he'd go back home and tell her the whole story. Until then, it was just fake. In some way he hadn't understood before, Manus now knew she could make his life complete. That beyond mere need to be as one with her made all good. So as a memory, his wife now merged more penetratingly. And how Manus viewed himself as his life's puzzle, shaped around a hole, was so filled out. Flying by the seat of his pants through the starlit sky, Manus danced until gravity of the next city took hold of him, slammed his body, and he plunged into a terrifying darkness. A cold swarmed him, icing his limbs, his face, his head. Racked by chills, with swollen, bent body deflating, Manus plunged. Towards sparking flames that danced below across the landscape, this was all the light warding off the night in this land to which Manus now came. As he entered the dark atmosphere, the cold gave way to a hot fear. Eric's blood pounded through his heart again, and he gulped in the acrid air. His body swelled once more till he floated as before, just out of reach of the scene below. Once more, an odd show played out underneath his airborne feet. Flames shot up from burned barrels set out on zigzagging footpaths. Crowds around each one of these mills, shuffling past these hills of scraps that littered the dwellers' route. They silently marched to a beat that was made by the sound of their feet as they pounded along, jam-packed in place, silent heads down, lifeless as machines. Manus felt safe to closely inspect, so he moved lower in this darkness to see why the people paced so zombie-like on these trails. Once close, he twisted his bent body closer to the mound. He recoiled from what he there found. The shadow people marched past bigger hills, built of body flesh, each laying down bits of their own bodies before taking on pieces of another's flesh, so that an eye traded for eye, thigh for thigh, plus assorted limbs, femurs, fingers, legs, kneecaps, stretch of stomach, ligaments, ears, noses, small of back, skin, teeth, hair, and bone. Removed and new pulled on in its place, bloodless trades made at each bend on the path, each hill the same, each one a hub for wordless flesh trades. In the firelight, Eric saw more was there to be seen that was all beyond strange. For sometimes a leg was replaced by a tree branch or stone for an eye, so that the blocky people were just pieced up in ad hoc ways he didn't like. This explained the weird cadence to their march, as some creatures had palm fronds where there should have been feet, others shells for knees, all lacking symmetry. None in pairs cobbled together blocky horrors, woodenly walking, zigzag paths, more collections of bits than things cohesive, plants, stone and bone, crisscross creatures. They lurched along as best as they could with such ill-matched limbs as each took from the scrap heaps what they could best reap. And marched on and on without a look around, nor word, nor it seemed thought, on why they kept taking cast-off bits of stuff to complete their body collection, ever forward, plodding on. Some were more rock piles than people. Sex was just indistinguishable. None could easily be classified. These random things weren't full plants nor mammals. Some had brains for hands, breasts made of livers. Some two tongues with one from a snake, the other from a giraffe. Turn by turn, each became new construction. Streams in the dark, they just kept winding on their way to where could not be seen. Manus found the display grotesque, so away he tried to quit, could 
flee this depraved scene. But instead, Manus fell quickly, far, and absolutely way too hard. He landed thump right on a swelled rump. Each tried to stand, gravity did thwart. There poor Manus stuck, a turtle turned up on his shell. His futile attempts to raise himself life resisted. Hope seemed to him lost up until the darkness shook, and through the smell of charcoal scent of leather wafted up to his nose. The whole world quaked and rumbled. Manus was back, head against feet, once more upright, but now stuck in the path of a mixed human mouth elephant creature. This thing stomped ever closer. Promptly, Eric skipped fast from the wrath of the beast while doubled over on himself. A pair of feet he was, just hopping along, keeping in front of the leathery madcap mishmash beast, two feet chased by the beat of four. Luck stuck with Manus. Like a one-man stack race, he dashed down the dark track steps ahead of the Hugh Mouse Fant, and thus managed to keep the beast to his back. But soon, like the legendary hare, Manus began to run threadbare. He lost energy. Breath came heavily. The beast's feet seemed sure to smash him there. When hope seemed lost, Manus puffed and he puffed and he blew himself up again. In a nick of time in the air, he climbed, happy now to escape this black land. As he rose in the sky, feathers shook loose from his disguise, and then he could see that he, too, was just a grotesque mush, a collection of stone, bone, and wood. The air filling his lungs burst full of living and dead things, his whole life a sea of taking in, all just waves of colliding bits of particles. Then he recalled in Thomas where Jesus said, When you make two intertwined to be one, when you can make the inner like the outer, the outer like the inner, the upper like the lower, make male and female to be a single one, so that male is not male and female is not female. Or make what is eyes in place of an eye, a hand in place of hand, foot for foot, image to replace an image. When you do this, then you can enter the Father's land.